This is a Double Horse 9053 Volatation Helicopter. I purchased this RC helicopter from xheli.com approximately one week ago before it even came in. I've done a lot of research on various modifications I could do to increase performance and also decrease the likelihood of a crash, thereby damaging the helicopter. And I was actually able to come up with a pretty good list of things to do, and I applied most of those modifications onto this particular helicopter. Before I move on, I want to say that I am not affiliated with XLA.com. They do not endorse this video whatsoever. Uh, I just wanted to let you know where I got it because they had a pretty good price on it, and they were cheaper than eBay or anyone else for that matter. Um, so that's, like I said, that's where I got it at. And in case you're curious, I purchased it for $55, and these things can go for as much as $200 in a mall or some kind of shopping center, so you definitely want to go to the internet to get one of these. Um, with that said, I also want to say that anytime you modify your RC helicopter, keep in mind that um, you could injure yourself or you could injure somebody else if you don't know what you're doing. So please make sure you know what you're doing uh, when doing modifications on these. And also keep in mind that you can void your warranty when you modify uh, anything like this or anything for that, for that matter. So like I said, just keep that in mind. The first modification that I done was to purchase a new balance bar. This is actually a balance bar from a Double Horse 9077 helicopter. I got this spare part from xheli.com for uh, $5. And um, pretty easy modification. Took like, you know, two minutes, literally. Pretty easy. The hardest part is actually getting this pin right here out. And you can just kind of knock that out with a really small screwdriver. Um, anyways, I replaced this because the existing balance bar that comes with the helicopter, it's longer, it's heavier, it's made of metal. And, you know, it, it actually increases like the likelihood of a blade strike. Um, it's been kind of a problem with these helicopters. Um, and, you know, when this thing strikes those blades, it can chip your blades, cause you to have to replace them. And these things are kind of expensive. They can be hard to find sometimes, too. Uh, I got my spare set on eBay. Uh, you can get them at various different places. Uh, you know, anywhere from 6 to, you know, up to $12 for a, a spare set. So like I said, anytime you can reduce the chance that you might have to replace these, it's a good thing. It can save you some money. Um, like I said, this new balance bar is lighter. It's made of plastic. It's a little bit shorter. Um, so like I said, it's going to reduce that likelihood of a blade strike and also re reduce the likelihood of a crash, which could damage other components on a helicopter. Uh, when you do replace this balance bar, if you do do this modification, you got to replace these connect, or not replace, but add a connect buckle. You know, it already comes with one, but you need another one. And they actually come in packages of two. And, well, I got mine in a package of two from xla.com, as you can see, for a dollar. So they're pretty cheap. So all you need is an extra one to go on the other side here to make the extra connection, and you'll be good to go. The very next modification I've done was to increase the spacing between the blades. Uh, you can find this on various YouTube videos. Uh, I got this idea from a YouTube video, and it increases the spacing uh, by flipping the um, the main blade shaft here upside down and re and reconnecting it to the, to to the metal shaft. And um, this part right here used to be down here. And of course, the blade used to be on on top of it. By flipping that around and uh, turning your uh, blade grip upside down and putting it back on, of course you gotta you gotta flip these main blades here over. Because they'll be upside down once you do do that, you know that flip. Um, by doing that, you increase that that distance between these main blades, and that will greatly, greatly reduce the likelihood of a blade strike between your main A and B rotors, and like I said, uh, reducing the chance of a crash. So that worked out pretty well. It was actually pretty easy to do. It takes about uh, about 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20, depending upon your mechan mechanical aptitude. And I want to say that you want to make sure that you keep track of these screws when you disassemble this because there's a lot of really, really small screws. And if you drop one, the likelihood of you finding it is pretty small. So use a glass, uh, some small zippy bags, uh, a tray, something to keep those screws in. And you might want to pair them up too because sometimes they come in pairs, you know, some of them do come in pairs. So you want to keep track of them. And it'll make, it'll make that reassembly pretty easy. Um, like I said, there's a, a couple of YouTube videos that are more detailed on this and you might want to watch those. I'm just going to, I just gave you a quick rundown on it. Um, you got to take out these gears here, a couple other screws to do this. So it's a good modification to do. Uh, I definitely recommend it.
the very next modification I done was to increase the size of the tail rotor blades. The existing tail rotor blades are actually pretty small, as you can see. You can compare them right there. And they're a lot more narrow, a little bit shorter. And these bigger rotor blades will actually give you uh, quite a bit more speed on the helicopter and also give you a little bit better control as well. And how I've done this is I got this from a YouTube video that a gentleman posted as well. And how I've done this is, as you can see, I sawed the tips off of another set of uh, main rotor blades, actually a spare set that I bought. And I sawed those to 50 millimeters each. 50 millimeters on both sides. Give it a nice even cut on both sides. And um, I use super glue, crazy glue, as you can see, to bond these tips that I cut onto the existing um, tail rotor blades. Okay? And of course, anytime you mess with super glue, it gets a little bit messy, it can ooze out a little bit. So you want to kind of sand that down a little bit if it does, it does ooze out a little bit like I did. You want to keep this stuff as smooth as possible, these flying surfaces, because by doing that, um, you know, it's an aircraft. You got to think about that. So you got to keep those flying surfaces smooth. Well, that was actually a pretty easy modification. I used a Dremel tool to cut these, a Dremel tool and a cutting wheel. Um, if you got a Dremel tool, break it out because it's it makes this job a lot easier, a lot faster, a lot less painless. So it's a good thing to have. The very next thing I had to do, and it's strictly a product of me having to uh, resize these tail rotors, make these tail rotors uh, wider and longer. As you can see, when I done that, it made the tail rotor strike the tail fin here. Okay, so I took the Dremel tool and the cutting wheel, cut a little bitty notch out right there. That way, both these tail rotors would clear it completely. So, there you go on that. Uh, the very next thing I've done is just a real small modification. Uh, you don't need to buy anything for this. It's really easy. The antenna, uh, I stretched it out, ran it up along here. It's a corded antenna, um, or a wire antenna. And I ran it up through this tail fin right here, brought it down and tied it to the tail fin over here. That way I can stretch that antenna out. The very next thing I've done, and it's a very simple modification. Uh, a lot of people do this. It can be found on several uh, videos as well. Was to add a little bit of weight onto the front of this thing. This, uh, this helicopter has a tendency to kind of go backwards on you in flight and also in takeoff. So you want to add just a little bit of weight onto the front of it. Uh, different people do this different ways. You can use something around the house. It's really easy. Um, my particular preference was to actually take super glue and I super glued a magnet onto the front of this. I actually thought this was kind of a cool idea. It just kind of popped in my head. I seen some magnets laying around, so I did it. Um, the cool thing about this is you can take other magnets, like one or two other magnets or whatever, and add them to that, and you can increase or decrease the weight as you want to. Now, the only problem with this is the fact that if you crash a helicopter or go through a hard landing in some grass or something, you can lose those magnets. Uh, so if you got extra ones, you know, it'd be a good thing to have if you d do decide to do it this way. Um, my personal preference is probably going to be to find out what the optimum weight's going to be to put in the front of this thing and just glue them on there. That way they stay permanently bonded. You can actually take this uh, head unit off, the canopy, and you can add weight on the inside here like a coin or something like that. Uh, maybe even a fishing sinker or something uh, as long as it's not too heavy and that'll take care of that. The next modification that I'm going to do is to actually drill a small hole into the top of this canopy, okay? And the reason why I want to do that is I want to vent the electronics in here. That way they don't trap heat and it lessens the chances that you could fry your um, electronics inside there. Uh, I highly advise that you take the canopy off before doing this. You don't want to drill through and hit your, you know, the electronics inside there and uh, mess up the helicopter. I, I know that sounds like common sense, but you know you never know what people might do. Uh, the next modification I am planning on doing, I haven't done it yet, simply because I haven't got the parts in yet. Um, they came off eBay. I re I'm going to replace the uh, tail rotor motor. Okay, I'm actually going to put dual motors on here instead of just one. 
and you can see where the motor goes are really really small the motor goes right here in this housing okay so I'm going to replace this tail motor with an N20 PN motor and that's that can be found on another YouTube video as well and anyways I want to replace that motor I'm going to add another one to it and the reason why I want to add two of them on there instead of just one is because I can not only increase the power but I can also divide up that electrical load between two motors okay so it's going to increase the, the uh, lifespan of your motors and give you a little bit more power in the process um, it's just something I'm going to experiment with and we'll see how it goes and if it does go well then I'll post a YouTube video on that too and show you how, how, to, how to do it so uh, until next time, I'll see you later.